PeachyDragon.com. Happy Creative Stuff. Hey, and welcome to another exciting episode of Happy Creative Stuff. One of my viewers asked me to talk more about lip syncing and After Effects. Let me show you a few examples that use lip syncing. If we had some real talent, we could raise money, but we don't. I'll get it! Hello, Mayor! So first we have the example of the Powerpuff Girl animation. This is Bob, and this is John. Bob is your everyday average guy, and so is John. Then we have a traditional 2D animation. I have a pen, okay? The best pen. I have an apple. Uh, apple pen, okay? And then we have the strange animation I did with photos of Donald Trump. Links to all of these animations are in the description below. So here we go. Okay, so where you start with any of these processes is you need your audio. So you have your audio file, whatever it is, record it first or get it from series or from the internet, whatever it is you're using, get your voiceover artist to do it for you. After you have that, you need mouths to use for lip syncing. And if it's easy to find someone Google, if you Google, you'll probably find the following set that I'm about to show you. If you Google, it's pretty easy to find them. This is one of the sets that shows up that you'll find on Google. And you'll see there are letters for each mouth shape. So you simply look at what you need and you use that shape to represent the corresponding letter. So you listen to your audio and you put that in. So now, obviously, you need to have your mouths ready for your animation. Generally, your head would be one shape and then you would have the mouths as a separate composition where you turn layers on and off. Let me show you some examples. Here is the blossom face that I used for the 3D animation. So I used the original cartoon and then looked at how they did it. So I've got different shapes. Let me start at the bottom. I've got a sad F mouth. That's for an F and a V sound. Happy F. Sad wide open. Sad wide open making the L sound. Sad smaller making the L sound. Happy wide open, etc, etc. There's a whole bunch. I'm using the same ones that you generally get on the charts. So similar to this, you usually need a sad and a happy version of each. And then I also did this tramp animation where I didn't just animate the mouth, I actually made the heads beforehand. So you can see I've got all the different sounds. I tried to guess which ones I would correspond to what sound, I didn't use them all. Okay, so here we are looking at the Powerpuff Girl project. So if you look at your timeline, if you scrub through, I put the reference on top. So if I scrub through that, you can hear the sound as well or you can just zoom it in and put your scroll bar there like you can maybe just zoom the timeline which is what I would recommend open up click on your reference push LL so you can see your um, audio waveform there you go and now if I scrub it you can do that or you can just preview it by pushing enter the last of the finishing touches the last of the finishing touches so I know that that's an L, so I go and I put the corresponding L mouth on. So what you would do, I've already animated this, but you would go through, zoom your timeline a bit. So if you find the mouth that you need, so there's a whole bunch here. I'm just going to use an example. So this was on a vowel. So I think it's this mouth. No, it's not that mouth. Let's see, is it this mouth? It's that mouth. So you can see, what I did is I turned the opacity on and off. So I would keyframe the opacity, that's 100%. On the next frame, this layer is on 0% opacity and a different layer, which I think is not that one, it's this one. That one's on 100%. That one stays on 100% for two frames because it's an S or a T sound, three frames actually. And then on the next frame, that's 0% opacity. And then this one is 100% opacity again. So you simply go through the audio step by step and you just do that. It's a bit time consuming, but you match it to your waveform and it gets pretty easy after a while. Okay, but there's an even easier way to do this in After Effects. And I used a different video. I'm not going to explain how to do it. I'll put the link to the video below. This video shows you how to build a rig that helps you to do it much easier. So look on screen. You see what I have is my Donald Trump head, or this would be the mouth in normal cases. And at the top, I've got guide text. So if I take that red block, let's just go to the end because it was a little bit easier to navigate towards the end for various reasons. Okay, so that red block, if I move that over the text that I put there, 
it changes the mouth to what's represented there. So there's a T or an N or an L, there's an F sound, there's a goofy grin, there's a teethy grin. If I go to the other side, you see there's E, there's an open E, there's a wide E, different sound syllable, there's an R. Okay, so in order to do this, it's still the same principle. You still need all your layers with your mouth, but the video will guide you about how to do that. And in this case, you've got frozen keyframes. So I just keyframe the position of that, the position of that red block. And as I go through, that keyframe keeps for the duration. And so in this case, you only keyframe the position of the red block. And as you go through, that red block through scripting corresponds to certain mouths and it will change automatically. If you feel cheated and you feel that I haven't done this in enough detail, let's go into an actual example and look at how to do this now. So you zoom your timeline in and you look, you have to push L to see your, you push it twice to see your waveform. L3, I don't, okay, maybe if it doesn't work for you, sometimes just open that up and then open up the audio tab and open up the waveform tab, there you go. So now you can see that's one phrase, that's her saying, what's the matter? Okay, so I'm going to set my timeline, my beginning and end points there, so that if I preview. What's the matter? What's the matter? Okay, so there's your audio. It's not playing back perfectly for some reason, but you can hold control and scrap through it slowly. What's, 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 what's the Which can make you a bit crazy, but that's fine. So let's start. You're going to have a normal mouth starting out that would normally already be turned on. I'm going to scroll down. This might look a bit confusing if you don't know what I'm doing. So let's turn on, the opacity are all set to zero, so they all need to be able to keyframe. So let's just turn on the keyframing for all the mouse that we wanna use. I'm not gonna use all of them now, but I'm just showing you. Okay, so I have my sad face at 100%, because she's concerned, she wants to know what's the matter. Now on the next frame, your audio, well, she'll be opening her mouth. So, you need to change that. You can have the, so the sad face will probably be from earlier already. So at this point, you have to keyframe the sad face again at 100%, go to the next frame and turn it to 0%. So that means that on the, that it'll, it'll be on and then it'll be off. And on this frame, you need a sound. So there's no real sound for W. We can check Photoshop for the chart. I don't think there's generally, there isn't, a mouth that corresponds to W. You can sort of use that, but it's such a quick frame. So what I'm going to do is just use the A sound. So we need it open and she's sad. So let's say it's wide because she's concerned. So we're going to take the wide mouth. We need to set the opacity to 100 here. Make sure that the opacity on the previous frame is set to zero so that it turns on and off immediately. So she says, what? So about here, we're going to have a T. Maybe around there. So generally two frames per sound is a good amount. So you hear we have a bit more, let's say the T is around there. T and S use the same frame. So we'll have a sad T. There isn't sad S, that's the same, same look. So let's turn the opacity on that up. Now on the previous frame, see now that you can see a good example of what not to do, because now it's fading across in a strange way. So go to the previous frame, turn it to zero. So we've got it on and off. Let me just see why the other mouth, why the open mouth is actually also fading. Okay, I know it's just being covered. It isn't fading, but it should fade. So here we need to put it on 100, and then on the next frame it's on zero. So now we have what's, and if you play that, it looks like she's saying what? If I play this from the, the whole timeline, Okay, so that's not brilliant, but that's how you start. You start and then you refine it. What's the, and then you'd have a different mouth there. You just keep going like that all the way through until you're happy with what you have. Professor? What's the matter? If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button below. Leave a comment, tell us what you liked, what you didn't like, your opinions, what else you wanted to talk about. Please subscribe to the channel. It really helps us a lot. If you want to get in touch with us, the social media details are on the screen now, including our websites. This video is awesome.
Give some love to the Epic Voice Guys YouTube channel. You probably know him better as John Bailey, the voice of Honest Trailers. He does amazing voiceover work, interesting reviews, and he also did the intro and outro voiceovers for this channel. PGDragon.com Happy creative stuff.